Welcome to Cal State Fullerton, The Report. News, views, and info to go. I'm Dr. Lee Bentley Gonzalez. I'm Simon Fetterman. And I'm Rebecca Guzman. On today's show, we'll be covering the news, views, and info to go here at the campus and in the local communities. First up in our news segment, we will take you on a Titan tour around the campus, which will include stops at the Arboretum and the Becker Amphitheater. We'll also bring you up to date with Cal State Fullerton's eight academic colleges and the Irvine campus in our College Collage segment. And in the View segment, we'll hear about the exciting research taking place on the Cal State Fullerton campus and take a look at our baseball team and women's basketball team who have come together with the community to honor the passing of basketball coach Monica Kwan and baseball player Nick Hurtado. Then for the Titan Talk segment, I interviewed Dr. Bernicia Johnson Ames, who is the Cal State Fullerton's Vice President of Student Affairs, and we talk about the various support and programs available for the Cal State Fullerton students. And lastly, in our Info to Go, we will cover the latest news on the radical protesters that have expressed their controversial views all around campus. We will also test your knowledge about Cal State Fullerton with some Titan trivia, and of course, we'll leave you with the Titan tip of the day. Now let's get started with the news and Alfred's Titan tour around the campus. Thank you, Rebecca. Our first stop on our Titan tour around the campus is Mang Hall, which recently hosted the Clay's College Concert. This unique benefit concert featured more than 200 students in instrumental and vocal ensembles performing a wide range of musical compositions nonstop for 90 minutes. This event, sponsored by Morningside Retirement Community, was meant to support scholarships for music students at CSUF. Our next stop is the Arboretum, which will soon be hosting its second annual Brews, Blues, and Barbecue event. The event gathers the best Orange County brewers in celebration of each of their world-class brews. Bubba and the Big Bad Blues Band will be performing, and Big B's Barbecue will be providing the food. The event sold out in its first year and is hoping for another year of success. Over at the Titan Student Union, Cal State Fullerton's Research Week highlighted many students' and faculty members' accomplishments in scholarly and creative activities. President Mildred Garcia opened the week's events, saying that they help our campus and community partners to learn more about each other and develop better relationships. Lastly in our tour, we have the Becker Amphitheater. Every Wednesday, ASI Productions hosts free concerts from 12 to 1 p.m. The up-and-coming bands that play differ in genre every week, from rock and country to rap and even classical music. Famous bands such as Rage Against the Machine and Imagine Dragons have played this event in the past, so try and come down when you can during your lunchtime because you'll never know who will be there next. That's about it for the Titan Tour. Back to you in the studio, Dr. Bentley. Thanks, Alfred, for that report. It's always great to hear about the exciting and interesting events happening here in the campus. You're right, Dr. Bentley. There is always something interesting and fun to do here at CSUF. Now let's move on from the news segment to College Collage. Megan, tell us what's happening in the colleges. The eight colleges in the Irvine campus of Cal State Fullerton always strive to create opportunities that will benefit students both professionally and academically. Here are the latest stories going on in our College Collage. First, the College of Communications hosted their annual Com Week. Speakers from many different industries led lectures and workshops throughout the week to help communication students better prepare for internships and potential careers. The Mahalo College of Business and Economics is in the process of finalizing an agreement with Kagawa University, located in Takamatsu, Japan. If finalized, the agreement will establish an international collaboration and a student exchange program. The College of the Arts hosted a concert that included performances from the CSUF Concert Choir, along with the choirs of Miracosta High School and Pasadena City College. These talented choirs have given a number of performances all around Southern California and have even toured in Canada and Hawaii. The College of Education announced that CSUF is initiating the Early Start program for incoming freshmen who are not ready to take college math or English. The program mandates summer school, which will give students a chance to take a full semester of remedial courses and be prepared for college-level coursework for their fall semester. Start your engines! This year, CSUF will be represented at the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Titan Motorsports, a student team from the College of Engineering and Computer Science, will be among the teams featured at the Lifestyle Expo. The Cal State Fullerton team will be showcasing their Titan 6, a Formula SAE race car that they've been building for the event. The College of Health, Human Health and Development has a scholarly peer-reviewed online journal focusing on health education. The online journal named the Californian Journal of Health Promotion is a publication that aims to help health professionals and scientists 
learn about latest and greatest in health practice and research. The College of Humanities and Social Science is hosting the Asian American Comics Anthology Lecture, Shattered, an event sponsored by the Asian American Studies Program. Editors Perry Shen and Jeff Yang from Secret Identities will be speaking about the latest volume of their series. Remember in the beginning of Titanic when the team first discovered the ship? Well, Robert D. Ballard was the leader of the actual team that discovered the ship in 1985. He was here on campus as a keynote speaker for Fullerton's Explorations in Math and Science Symposium in conjunction with CSUF's Research Week. Ballard discussed deep sea explorations and his research on the Titanic. And lastly, but certainly not least, the CSUF Irvine campus held LGBTQ Awareness Week in the TSU Lounge. The week included an open discussion on relationships and revealing one's sexual orientation. In addition to the forum, there were also free snacks and viewings of movies such as Milk, Rent, Philadelphia, and The Laramie Project. That's our college collage, catching you up on the latest news from the CSUF colleges and the Irvine campus. Now back to you, Dr. Bentley. Megan, thanks for that report about the opportunities and events happening in the colleges and at the Irvine campus. Cal State Fullerton does offer great opportunities and there's still so much more to cover. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the various views of our campus and give you some info to go. Stay tuned and we'll be right back after this brief message. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Visit us at stoptext.rex.org. Welcome back to Cal State Fullerton The Report. News, views, and info to go. Simon, tell us what we have coming up in the views segment. Well, up next in our views segment, we have Denise who will tell us about the honors President Garcia received at the Legislative Women's Caucus Ceremony. We'll also hear from ASI President Dwayne Mason Jr. and his views on the 2013 ASI President elections. And lastly, we'll hear what is being done on campus to provide a more empowering and safer environment for the women of Cal State Fullerton. Denise, fill us in. Thanks, Simon. President Garcia was recently honored for the Breaking the Glass Ceiling by the California Legislative Women's Caucus. She was one of the 11 to be honored at the ceremony held in Sacramento. In a gracious and humble statement after accepting the award, President Garcia expressed her overwhelming gratefulness to be included among the other notable women. She also noted that many owe a debt to the strong women who served as role models in their lives. And if inspiration is given to others for a life of service and hard work and genuine spirit will continue in generations to come. As for ASI President Dwayne Mason, he recently made his stance on the 2013 ASI elections known. Mason posted a Facebook picture of himself and Vice President Katie Ayala posing at a voting booth with a caption that read, Dwayne and Katie just voted for Rahala and Johnny for ASI President and VP. You should too. Candidates Rahana Latif and Johnny Leggett have held a presidential campaign very similar to Mason's and Katie's in the year before. Their common goals included advocacy for students, promoting school pride, and making the student voice known to the university administration. Though Mason publicized his particular vote for one party, he highly encourages students to vote for any candidate in the ASI elections to voice their opinion and expand student awareness. Moving on to our campus views, many parts of our campus have been working together to promote a safer and more empowering environment for the women of Cal State Fullerton. Recently, University Police, Tide and Recreation, and the Student Health and Counseling Center sponsored a special spring program designed to teach women awareness and self-defense techniques. Each participant was rewarded with a certificate of completion of all three classes. The program has benefited many women and may continue to be offered in the future. That's all for our Campus Views. Back to you in the studio. Good report, Denise. It's always great keeping up with the Campus President and the ASI President and hearing about their views and activities. Now in our view segment, we have Sarah bringing us up to date with what's going on in the community. Recently, our Titan family has suffered two tragic losses, one of which was assistant women's basketball coach Monica Kwan and the other Nick Hurtado. As many of you have heard, Kwan and her fiance Keith Lawrence were victims of an Irvine homicide in, in February. Kwan helped guide the Titans to a winning record improvement and also helped the team reach the Big West Tournament for an 11th consecutive season. 
In memoriam of Quan and her contributions to CSUF athletic community, the Titan Shops University store is selling Monica Quan and Keith Lawrence memorial t-shirts. A portion of the proceeds will be donated to the Monica Kwan and Keith Lawrence Girls Basketball Scholarship Fund. You can also donate directly to www.leaap.org. Our Titan family is also mourning the loss of Nick Hurtado, a Cal State Fullerton star baseball player who passed away in March after a long fight with bone cancer. At 21 years old, Hurtado was an outstanding pitcher and positive team player. His teammates described him as an ultimate friend who always showed genuine love for the people around him. Before Fullerton's baseball game against UC Davis, both teams held a moment of silence and a video tribute that was played to honor him. These two members of our Titan community have positively impacted many people's lives, and they will always be remembered for their genuine Titan spirit and love for others. Back to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Sarah, for that report. And our thoughts go out to both families. The contributions and memories of Nick Hurtado and Monica Kwan will always be close in the hearts of the Titan family. Now, Dr. Bentley, what do you have coming up in the Titan Talk? Well, Rebecca, this week I had the privilege of sitting down with Dr. Bernicia Johnson Ames, the Vice President of Student Affairs here at Cal State Fullerton, and we talked about the various student affairs programs and services here at the campus, as well as Dr. Ames' passion for student access and student success. Here's what she had to say. Thanks for joining us today, Vice President Ames. We appreciate your time. And you're currently the Vice President of Student Affairs here at Cal State Fullerton. When did your passion begin for all things student affairs, student access, student success? Well, quite honestly, I've been working in student affairs since I was a college student. I um, worked in residence life uh, as an RA um, in undergrad, and I just built a, a passion for the work and started to learn throughout the course of my graduate studies when I was getting my master's in social work that there was a real definitive and um, really rewarding um, amount of work going on in student affairs. So I, for years, I had sort of a two-track career. Mm -hmm. um, my discipline of expertise is social work. My PhD is in social work and my master's is in social work. But um, I also had a very vibrant student affairs career mm -hmm. um, that was born out of the work that I did as an undergraduate student. Well, you certainly have made that your passion and we're very fortunate to have you here. Can you share the direction of the Student Affairs Division uh, with our viewers as far as what your goals, priorities for that division is, and a little bit about the Student Affairs Division here? So the Student Affairs Division here and in many institutions across the nation is really a, a part of the academic experience where we help the students have the tools to succeed inside and outside the classroom. So I'll give you an example. Most Student Affairs Divisions um, are comprised of a host of co-curricular activities that range from student government to athletics to um, having support services for students with children, our Children's mm -hmm. Center, um, having a Veteran Services Center, the Women's Center, a varied array of either support, enrichment, or engagement activities that help students fortify their learning experience so that while they're learning, they're also developing as a whole person which is really, really a requirement. And part of a university experience that dates back to the beginning of the academy. Um, there were, have always been student affairs experiences that co collaborated and contributed to students having a fantastic experience. And that's what we do here at stu in student affairs. You are all about, like you said, ensuring student access and success. And again, you stated, your goal is to ensure that student affairs continues to work closely with students and expand guidance and access. Okay. So with all the challenges that our students face here on the campus today, what are some of the ways that student affairs can expand, enhance that potential for success and access? I'll tell you three. The first one would be parental education. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of initiatives across our division that focus on how to support our first generation students. Um, very important to help people who come to school and do not have somebody at home that's been down the road mm -hmm. to feel very comfortable with living in both of the pieces of their life. Because again, a first generation student comes, on, comes here to go to school and then goes home to their community mm -hmm. where there may not be as many people who have a college education. And we in Student Affairs provide support services that help them with all those transitions. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, obviously, financial need. Um, we have a, a, a varied um, amount of opportunities on our campus for student employment, financial aid. Um, there are scholarship programs here. 
all of which we play a big part in working with. We try to connect our students with the tools for access and success. You must have access to the education, and that means your tuition. Bottom line, for some of our students, it does mean funding. Mm -hmm. And so we're constantly pushing ourselves around how do we connect our students with more scholarship dollars? How do we make our students more savvy about navigating financial aid so that financial aid is not the big bad wolf on campus <laughs> that, that, it, that it can be? Mm -hmm. um, and third, I would say just making sure they have a good time. You know, from the day that they enter to the day that they graduate, their experience is what will mark whether or not they'll be able to say in a very proud and meaningful way, I love Cal State Fullerton. And then go out and be a part of our community and spread the word of Cal State Fullerton. What words of encouragement would you tell someone who's thinking about starting school, starting college, but maybe doesn't quite know how to do it? Well, I think um, the advice that I give many of my students is stay connected to your energy and don't get bogged down with not having all the answers. Mm -hmm. Because it, the journey unfolds along the way. And if you don't take a step, then you don't have the experience that teaches you which next step you want to have. It's like I say, you, you don't have a bad job. You don't know what you want on the good job. If you don't have, you know, just take the journey and, and be fearless. Just jump in. Ask questions. Be very, very vigilant and energized um, because that's what you need to go the distance and figure out how to confront your fears early um, so that you can get the support you need and get the mentors you need. Ask questions. Thank you so much again for joining us, Vice President Ains, and we wish you continued success to you and your Student Affairs Division. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, Dr. Bentley, what a great resource Student Affairs truly is. They sure offer a lot of great programs on the campus. You know, I think Student Affairs really does work hard to ensure student success here in the university. Now, stay tuned, because coming up right after this short break, we have our info to go segment. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Cal State Forge in the Report. News, views, and info to go. Up next, Esmeralda will give us some info to go, and Curry will have some Titan trivia and a great Titan tip of the day. Now we'll send it to you, Esmeralda, for our info to go. Today in our info to go segment, many students have been wondering about the protesters that have been visiting our campus to express their religious views. Well, one prominent group of protesters come from the Westboro Baptist Church, known for their stance against homosexuality, other religions, and nationalities. They've appeared on talk shows, radio shows, and even college campuses claiming homo is a sin. It may be the nation's most controversial church, but this year at CSUF, students took a stance and showed their support for the LGBTQ community by marching around campus and advocating their opposition to the church. In response to these student protests, Westboro did leave a message declaring that they're only trying to save people from their sins. That's it for info to go and now back to you. Good info to go, Esmeralda. It's great to see CSUF students uniting together to express their beliefs. And now Curry will give us some Titan trivia and, of course, the Titan tip of the day. Thank you, Simon. Today in our Titan trivia, I'll give you some interesting history on our school mascot. Almost every school has a mascot to represent a sign of commitment and school pride. But many wonder why our school chose an elephant to represent CSUF. Well, here's a little history check for you. The choice of the elephant as the university's mascot dubbed Tuffy the Titan dates back to the early 60s when the campus hosted the first intercollegiate elephant race in human history. The event attracted more than 10,000 spectators, included 15 racing elephants and worldwide news coverage. It's truly fascinating to see how our Titan pride was first created. And speaking of Titan pride, let's hit you with the Titan tip of the day. Did you know that there are benefits every Tuesday for wearing your CSUF gear? A 10% discount is given to any student showing their Titan pride while purchasing food at the food court and other restaurants and other stores on campus. 
If you don't have any Titan gear yet, not to worry. In support of this initiative, the Titan Shops will be offering a 25% discount on regularly priced yet CSUF apparel on the first Tuesday of each month. All you have to do is present your CSUF ID card. Items that, make, items that can be worn include CSUF shirts, ties, pins, buttons, or scarves. Now, gear up and get ready to show your school spirit. Every week, Titan Tuesday. That's it for our Titan trivia and tip. Back to you, Simon. Well, now we know where Tuffy came from. Thanks, Curry, for that Tuffy trivia and the money-saving tip of the day. From Cal State Fullerton, that's the report for this week. I'm Simon Fetterman. And I'm Rebecca Guzman. And from all of us here at The Report, we hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Dr. Lee Bentley Gonzalez. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time with more news, views, and info to go on another Cal State Fullerton The Report. Have a great week. Thank you.